I'm no fan of Boston's newspaper of record, but unlike the Boston Globe, I give credit where it's due. And this week, props go to one Dugan Arnett, who broke the story, Boston police sergeant who bragged about hitting George Floyd protesters with car, was previously accused of sexual assault. You read that correctly, from Arnett's reporting. The Boston police sergeant, mired in recent controversy over video footage showing him bragging about intentionally striking protesters with his vehicle, is a veteran supervisor with a troubled, complicated past on the police force, according to two people briefed on the matter. At Tremont Park, and I was in the middle of the fucking... Th so then, I had to fucking keep coming. Fucking running, I'm fucking hitting people with the car. Did you hear me? I was like, get the fuck out. Clifton McHale, a 23-year Boston Police Department veteran with family ties to the department's upper ranks, was accused in 2005 of sexually assaulting an intoxicated woman while in uniform in a police vehicle and agreed to serve a one-year unpaid suspension following an investigation. That video in question, of course, came from the national outlet The Appeal and reporting released last month by journalist Owen Higgins, which showed Boston police officers bragging about attacking protesters and multiple instances of excessive force and the liberal use of pepper spray. From that bombshell, as demonstrations against police brutality and abuse of black Americans spread across Boston on the night of May 31st and early morning of June 1, the city's police department was out in force. Many officers wore body cameras. More on that shortly. But first, you probably want to hear more about the cop who was caught bragging on camera about hitting protesters and then tried to reverse his story. As reports from The Globe and other outlets at the time show, back in 2005, McHale was working at work near Faneuil Hall when he offered a woman he'd met a ride to her hotel in an unmarked police cruiser. He reportedly took her into an alley. The woman later told police that he assaulted her, while McHale had maintained that any contact between himself and the woman was consensual. More from The Globe. A year later, McHale agreed with the department to accept a one-year unpaid suspension after an internal investigation concluded that he had engaged in inappropriate sexual relations with the highly intoxicated woman. Following the suspension, McHale, whose father is a Boston police deputy superintendent, returned to the department and was later promoted to sergeant. Just another bad apple, you know? According to WokeWindows.org, an amazing resource that compiles available police data, including internal affairs files, McHale has at least one sustained allegation and three cases total, regardless of finding. The Internal Affairs Division has found him in violation of policies including untruthfulness, securing and maintaining a firearm, negligence, duty, unreasonable judgment, and conduct unbecoming. Now, you might still be scratching your head wondering, are cops really allowed to have sex with drunken people who they offer to take home? What about with people they arrest? In short, yes and no. Or really, it depends on when it happened. The woman who McHale engaged in inappropriate sexual relations with was not in custody, but if she had been, there was no law against it at the time. Dig Boston was actually the first to report that in an article by Corey Feener back in March 2018. She quoted Peter Manning, who teaches at the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Northeastern University, saying the loophole in Massachusetts law is striking. Thankfully, Newton State Rep Kay Khan, along with Somerville State Senator Pat Jalen and other lawmakers did recognize the problem and drafted legislation that addresses the existing loophole. It took nearly three years, but that effort was eventually folded into the police reform legislation that Governor Baker just signed into law on New Year's Eve. The legislation includes the language, in a prosecution commenced under this subsection, a person shall be deemed incapable of consent to contact of a sexual nature with a law enforcement officer. Imagine that. As for Boston police, there are some new reforms in place there as well. Some are potentially quite promising, not to mention the work of police reform advocates who have worked on these issues for years and know all of the pitfalls. Still, it's Boston. Even with these revelations and appeals from the community, Mayor Marty Walsh last week still expressed confidence in the department. All things considered, I'm guessing that makes him the last person in the city who doesn't have a Blue Lives Matter sign outside their window who still believes that. 